Well, this woman is angry. I'm so sick of being a woman in the gaming community. Wow, okay, what's the issue here? It's because she opened her voice chat in Valorant and talked, which gets a lot of guys to blame her for being bad at the game because she's a woman. Internet safety 101, do not talk to strangers. It doesn't matter if that stranger is on the same team as you. They are still strangers, and they will suffer little to no consequences for saying bad things to you. Everyone's still asking us why we don't feel comfortable when someone's threatening us on regular basis because it's all just banter instead of finding ways to prevent harassment. It's called the mute button. It prevents harassment very well. Yes, women get a lot more flack for being women in gaming space, but don't put yourself in situations where people can abuse you with zero consequences. Even I, as a guy, wouldn't want to open my voice chat to complete strangers online. This is for your own safety. Don't do it. Speaking of being a woman in gaming, this leads us into the discourse of video game women, which has gone really stupid as of late. Here's a question for you all. Why do female characters need to look good and pretty always? Because people like characters that look good and pretty. It's that simple. Can't women just freaking exist? Well, yeah, if they are real women, but Aloy is a fictional character. She's not real. One of her is made out of Lego. I find her attractive though. That's cool, man. She does look nice sometimes. How she looks shouldn't even be such a big deal. Yeah, speaking from personal experience, if you're a small dealer while others are the big dealers, just let the big dealer speak. Mind your own business and actually treat this as a small deal rather than talking about how it shouldn't be a big deal. The industry shouldn't cave in to just make generic cute girls with no distinct features. Who are the cute girls with no distinct features? Are you talking about the female characters from Eastern games? Because if you can't tell the difference between Tifa and Eve, that's a serious blindness problem on your end, dude. Speaking of attractive female characters, didn't we have a Perfect Dark remake announced? The original Perfect Dark is a classic. The remaster is fine. Zero is kind of odd gameplay-wise, but Joanna Dark does look great. There will be a reboot of Perfect Dark where Joanna Dark looks... Uh, kind of odd. Her chin is a lot wider than I expected. But hey, the gameplay looks great. Huh, it's my thoughts on Zero, but reversed. Oh well, I'm looking forward to it. I was a 100% sure that reading the comments on this would mostly be men angry about not getting an over-sexualized anime girl, but instead get a more realistic world depiction of what women look like. But they've never seen one in real life, it seems. Uh, are you sure that a realistic woman looks like that? Remake Joanna looks a bit odd to me, but it's not the worst thing that I've seen. That's just my subjective point of view. It's a first-person shooter anyway, and the gameplay does look great, so we'll see how it goes. Maybe we should just not talk about video game women because the discourse is getting toxic, or according to this person. What's going on with video game women? The discourse around video game women is so flipping cringe. Yeah, it's the Fable reboot hero. I never really minded her, to be honest. I just want to know if the game could get any worse than the third one. Porn has genuinely rotted people's skulls to the point where every main female lead needs to be a half-naked Barbie with big floppy jugs. Not really, because Barbie doesn't look good with big floppy jugs, unless you're talking about Margot Robbie. Nobody is making the argument, pretty girl equals porn. You just did? If studios want average looking characters, fine by me. If studios want supermodels, fine by me. It's your wallet, you buy the games you want. Me? I just want a good Fable game. The only decent one is the first one, and it goes downhill from there. Who are the developers of this again? Playground Games? As in the guys who made Forza Horizon? Not choice, but okay. Before we get to a lot more game discourse, I just want to show you this cat that likes to roam around my house and my room. Oh, and huge thanks to all these wonderful sponsors. You are all fantastic. If you want to see your names among these legends, then check out the links down below. Just one dollar and you have supported this channel a lot. Seriously, thank you so much. And now let's talk about even more stupid discourse. Imagine being so ingrained in the internet discourse that you have to not be genuine with your opinions. Making a list of games I hate, but I'm forced to defend because of culture war dip strips. All these three games receive criticisms by many for reasons that are perfectly justified. The Last of Us Part 2 has a horrible story with weak characters and uninteresting drama. Suicide Squad has a horrible business model at the top of an aesthetically unpleasant and monotonous life service game. Horizon Forbidden West is not a horrible game, but it's an insubstantial game that just sits there. I get that culture warriors can make all sorts of stupid claims, but there's no use arguing with them. They already made up their minds. I say just let them air their complaints and see if the game industry loves just don't let them convince you to join their cause. You'll be a miserable wreck. 
Instead, join my cause of playing a backlog of great old games. The Cult of Warriors complain about a lot of stuff, one of which is diversity, which the game journalist Jason Schreier doesn't think it's a problem. Here's Jason Schreier and his take. He has plenty of issues in the gaming industry, like layoffs, burnouts, micropayments, short-term profits, all that stuff. But not diversity? Oh no, diversity is not an issue at all. Actually, a lot of these are issues. To me, diversity is only an issue when it's your only selling point. No matter what your issues are in gaming, I have one question. What do you want us to do? What should we do as gamers? Should we continue buying the games that these companies make? Should we send emails to the game companies and politely ask them not to screw things up? To me, the gaming industry is like watching a game of chess. We can't really influence what moves the players make. We can comment, but most of the time, they'll move on their own. I think it's better if we stop worrying about it, let these companies make whatever moves they like, no matter how disastrous it is, and play some good old games. Speaking of a call to action, it reminds me so much of this Supla, which I'm talking about this year, even though the article was from November 2023, because it popped up in my timeline recently. This dumb IGN article calls out the sexism of the game studio who made Black Myth Wukong by highlighting disgusting, unprofessional statements and behaviors made by the founders in social media from the last two decades to 2020 at the latest. It also links that to the general issue of sexism in the Chinese tech industry. Community Note says that the statements are horribly mistranslated, oh, and the replies are disabled. But even if they are translated accurately, digging decades old statements is straight up malicious. I love this part right here. One game fired feminist and the game sold 2 million copies. Another game conformed to feminist demands and got negative review bombs. Open your eyes. No one likes you. Apparently, this hit piece is not to encourage gamers to boycott the game, but to make the consumers know. Ah, so people can still buy games just fine, even after knowing that the game developers are sexist. Good to know that sexism and misogyny are just optional things to consider, rather than a moral obligation to be vehemently opposed to. But you know what? That's to be expected with ideologues. They say that they're not sexist, but then they show their true colors. You want to see real sexism? Try this hoopla. I think long-term relationships should be more than just banging. Women need to start using men for sex. Sleep with them and block them. Give them a taste of their own medicine. Huh. I love the implication that women never do this or have never thought of this. This is a 2023 post. I'm pretty sure that plenty of women have done this for decades now. If men have been doing this for decades and you only now got the idea to do the same thing, women have officially failed. The fact you think this is a delusional take is why she has a point. It's only wrong when women do it. Not really. It's more like I'm surprised that women never thought of that and that you have to point out how to commit that revenge. As for the ethical discussion about using people for sex and then blocking them, that's not very nice, obviously, but that's not nice for both genders. So both men and women shouldn't get away with that. But what do I know? I'm just some dumbass on the net. And that's all for the video today. Thank you all so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please don't forget to click like button and subscribe for more. Don't forget to check out my ABB Show stream channel. Link down below. Go subscribe as always. Thank you for watching, and I will see you all next time.